I received a book for my birthday this past year, and I really recommend this book to you all today. It's a great book. It's a true story of a woman's life, and she shares with us about her love, her faith for God, and the many things that happened to her over her lifetime and how God has pulled her through all the situations that she confronted. And this book is just a great book. It, the name of the book is If My Heart Could Talk. It's a story of faith, family, and miracles by Dodie Olstein. She begins her book by saying that she plans to never retire because she has so much to do for Jesus and she does not want to quit doing what God has called her to do. And she also says at the beginning, she says, I'm just a lady, an ordinary lady. They call me Dodie. Uh, they used to call me the pastor's wife and now I'm called the, the mother of the pastor. And she says that she's a lady who loves God. She has five children and all of her children are in full-time ministry. The first chapter of the book, she starts telling us about her family. Her father was an orphan, and he, both of his parents died when he was around seven years old, and he was taken in by his relatives, and he had to live in the barn. They did not allow him to live in the house, and he eventually had to quit going to school and work in the fields all day for this family. So he really did not have a good education. And I want to read what she said about her daddy. Dodie said, Daddy may have had a rough start, but as God always does, he redeems our past and makes all things new. He promises a good and bright future, one with hope and goodness. I think Daddy would not have been the great man he was if not for his past, because he learned to treat people right, with the dignity and respect they deserved. Instead of becoming bitter about his losses and hardship, by the grace of God, he became a blessing to Mother and to me, and to countless others in his lifetime. So what a testimony. He started off his life not good, but God redeemed all of it. Dodie goes on to telling us that she grew up in Texas in the United States of America, and at the age of two years old, they told her mother and father that she had polio. Her right leg and her foot stopped growing, causing her to limp and having to wear a heavy brace around her one leg. But she learned over the years to cover up this leg problem by the way she dressed, and, and she did not dwell on the problem that she had with her leg because she knew that God would do something good and, and she'd be able to use this problem to further his kingdom. So when she finished 12th grade, finished her schooling, she went on to nursing school. And she said that in nursing school, it was her greatest passion to serve sick people and to help them become uh, better again. And she just loved going to nursing school and working in the hospital. And every few weekends, she would go back home to visit her parents. And when she went back home, a young man became the pastor of her home church. And his name was Brother Olstein. And she enjoyed hearing his sermon, she said, and so often he would come to the hospital where she was in the next town, and he would visit some of the sick people that came to the church. And when they became sick, he would go to the hospital and he would visit them. And then he would always stop and see her at the hospital. And they began to um, like seeing each other. So she said when she finished nursing school and she graduated from nursing school, the following week, one week later, she married her husband, John Olstein. And they went on to have a son 
And after they had their first son, they had a, a daughter. Her name was Lisa. And she said that Lisa was born. She could not move her arms and her legs. And she had a trouble with her sucking reflexes. So she could not take a bottle. It would take hours for her to just get a little bit of milk. So the doctors diagnosed Lisa with a birth injury, kind of similar to cerebral palsy. And they told them, the parents, that she would never walk again and that she will probably be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. And this is what they said. I want to read this to you because it's so great. It was obvious that John and I needed a miracle. So we began to pray for one for Lisa. Those were some dark days for us as we struggled to believe, but God was so merciful and compassionate. We read his promises to us over and over. We presented our sick baby to God, knowing that it is his will to heal her. We were no longer double-minded on it. We believed that Lisa had a destiny beyond what the doctors would say. But days turned into weeks and weeks into months and nothing happened. But then on the fifth month, Lisa began to lift her head and move her limbs, which she had never done before. And then in the seventh month, she sat up on her own as if she's done it over and over again. Dodie said they took her back to the doctors and the doctor said, this is a miracle girl. By the time Lisa was one year old, she was completely healed. Then she goes on to say that because of Lisa's transformation, it was a life-changing event for us. Her healing inspired John to change the course of his ministry and his life. It solidified our belief in the power of miracles, which would lead to the decision to start Lakewood, the church that believes in miracles. I believe God allows things in life sometimes so he will get the glory. And we started the Lakewood Church. So the Lakewood Church began to grow and people began to come from all races of, of life and from all over. They started to attend this church. And the church remained the same over the years and an oasis of love. And Dodie says that everyone was welcome to their church. They accepted everyone exactly how they were. But then she goes on near the end of the book, and there's so many stories and wonderful things in here that has happened over her life. But she goes on to tell us, in October 1981, her and her husband always had a huge conference and people came from all over the United States. And she was not feeling well, but she knew that she wanted to go and uh, do her responsibilities for this conference. And even though she was so wicked, she was so sick and weak, she said, I'm going to go. And she went with her husband. They did the conference for the few days. And when she came back home, she had to go to the hospital. She was taken to the hospital. And she thought, well, I'll only be here a few days, but a few days turned into several weeks that she was there. And I want to read what um, happened here. It was in December. The doctors met my husband, John Olstein in the lobby of the hospital. The doctor said, Pastor, I am sorry about this, but your wife has cancer of the liver and we cannot find the primary tumor. John came to my room and told me, and I thought, no way, not me. There I was, only 48 years old, being told I did in fact have cancer. And the doctor's news only got worse. I was given a few weeks to live with or without the use of chemo. What a Christmas present this was. John could not believe what he was hearing. He said, Doc, I'm going to take my wife home today. We're going to pray and seek God, and then we will decide what we're going to do. We believe in miracles, and we believe in the miracle worker. 
the doctor said, well, Pastor John, you're going to have to have a real miracle this time. So she went home, and this is what she said. Dodie said, as I sat in my home and thought about my cancer and what the doctor said, I knew I had a giant of a battle on my hands. How was I going to fight it? As I sat there, something John has told us so many times in church came up in my spirit. Store up the word of God in your heart. Then when you need it, you'll have it. Well, I needed it all right. I was so thankful then that I had read and studied my Bible for all those years. I knew that God was a God of miracles and that he was my healer. And then I want to read what she says here at the end. Well, those few weeks that the doctor has given me to live are now 35 years and counting. God truly worked a miracle and healed my body, and I am forever grateful. Today, my greatest passion is to teach people about healing and to pray for those who need healing. If you need healing in your body, it is important to remember that healing doesn't always come in the same way. Just because I did it, not use the medicine, does not mean that you should not use the medicine. The doctors told me that they didn't think it would help me and that the chemo might only prolong my life for a little longer. I believe God works through medicine and I am thankful for the doctors who work so hard to help us get well. I believe we should do all we can and what we cannot do, God is going to do. It is important to remember that God is not the one who made you sick. He does not want you to live that way. Did you get that? It is God's will for you to be well. Then she goes on to say, We must understand that people's healings come in different ways. We all have known someone who had believed well and fought hard, but was still graduated to heaven. I don't understand why some of our healing comes as an extended life on earth and some come in the form of dying. But I do know this, God knows what he is doing. As hard as it may be, we have to trust him during these times and know that he is always doing what is best for us. Finally, please don't ever believe or try to make someone else believe that a person did not live because their faith was too small. This is not the truth. This is the devil trying to torment you with grief, and it is no way to live. God wants the best for you and those that you love, and only he truly knows what is the best. So God healed her, and she's still working in the Lakewood Church, with her husband, but in 1999, John Olstein went to be with the Lord. Dodie said that her husband crossed that finish line with fire, still burning in his soul. He died believing for healing, and that's what he got. Just not on this side of heaven, she said. I know that John heard these words from his Savior, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, sometimes things happen and we can't always understand them, she says, but we are not the one to question what God has planned and what God says. She, Dodie said it was very hard to lose her husband, but she remembers that, that um, you know, during those times we cannot hold God accountable for his ways because his ways are always the right way. She had a son, the middle child, who was Joel Osteen, and he never would preach in the church during the time of his father. And she said that Joel Osteen 
decided that he would try and, and preach. So he got up that Sunday right after his father died and he preached his first sermon. And now today he runs the Lakewood Church in the Texas in the United States. Over 45,000 people come to a service over that weekend. And Doty said that he gives his life to that church and that he studies hard and he takes it so seriously, his um, being the pastor of that church and he does his best for the Lord. So Doty today at the age of 88 years old, she continues to serve under the direction of her son, Joel Olstein. And I want to just read two little paragraphs what she says at the end of the book. God chooses ordinary people to do extraordinary things, but we must be willing. Even when we don't feel we're quite ready for the challenge, what is God asking you to do today? Do you feel inadequate? Always remember that you can stand in your heavenly Father's shoes. He promises to see you through no matter how tough the task. If he has called you, he will equip you. And then she says at the very end, I think my best advice I can give you is to be an imitator of Jesus Christ. Have him living in your heart, know what his word says, and love and be kind to people. That's what Jesus did. He walked in love. He did not judge people. He encouraged the brokenhearted. He healed the sick and the bruised. Love as Jesus did, care for others, pray for others, just be like Jesus. Amen.